be having way more fun. Okay, so today we are reviewing a show called The Idol, which is Sam Levinson's latest creation. He was the director behind Euphoria and Malcolm and Marie. The Idol is a HBO show that I believe started airing the week after Succession ended. And seeing as though I didn't make a video for Succession Season 4 when it came out, I thought I'd just briefly touch upon it now. I thought it was excellent, it ended perfectly, every character got not what they wanted, but probably what they needed mostly. Wrote this whole poetic thing about the dialogue and how it makes you read between the lines. It's very fascinating dialogue because on the surface it's all strange jargon but you're supposed to interpret what the characters are actually saying to each other. It's like their own strange cold language that you have to interpret but it was kind of too similar to that nerd writer video essay so I just thought maybe not. Most of the time the characters aren't even trying to be direct or sincere but you can always tell what's going on underneath. But yeah that's a whole tangent. Uh, Barry came out around the same time as Succession and that was the fourth and final season of that show. Very good, ended almost perfectly, really like that. HBO had two simultaneous bangers with that one, but this leads into the show that we're reviewing today which has a different story circulating it. So of course Sam Levinson made Euphoria and season one was really well received by audiences and critics. Season two however, audiences at least didn't like it as much. I really liked it, I watched the whole thing and thought it was all breathtaking cinema, it was only after that I found out, oh, they, they messed this up, they messed that up. I'm not really watching Euphoria for the plot. I know that sounds weird, but I'm just watching for, like, the human elements. It's more so about the emotions of the characters than it is about their actions and what they do in the story. I'm not watching it in the same way I'm watching Game of Thrones. Anyway, 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 on to the idol now. I'll start this review by saying that every time I went to watch another episode of this show, I really was not excited. Now, the reason it was this way was a mix of it being a poorly made show right off the bat in many areas, but also, the subject matter is quite dark and dire and unpleasant. It's hardly an uplifting story, it's fairly disturbing as it depicts one of the most vile sides of the showbiz industry. And that's what it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a challenging, disturbing, miserable piece of art. That's what it's trying to be. This was never supposed to be an accessible TV show like Barry or Succession where everyone loved it and it became like a new classic. Even if all the filmmaking was up to snuff, it would still be something that would be divisive and hard to watch, as it's about very depraved things. It's so bleak and cynical that honestly it strikes me more like a Lars von Trier film, like Breaking the Waves or Antichrist or something like that. One of these horrible, miserable things you'd see at a festival. The characters are wretched, but they're supposed to be like that. That's what the filmmakers intended. The characters are cunts, and I know that's a strong word, but it's never been more appropriate and more applicable than it is now. All in all, even if this was well made, it would have been something that a lot of people wouldn't have liked. Again, it's not another succession where it becomes embedded in the zeitgeist, and if that was what HBO intended, then that was a very poor move on their part. Onto the show itself, before we start critiquing it, I'll just say what it's about and what the themes are, just in case people are like, oh, you just didn't understand it, because I'm pretty sure it did. A piece of media can have interesting things, but still be poorly made. One of the main themes for me, and the one that I found the most most interesting was what it had to say about the tortured artist and the ethics surrounding that whole issue. As in the art world, being a tortured artist is somewhat of a requirement for making great art. And the show is sort of asking, is it right for you to allow someone to undergo an immense amount of trauma just because it'll cause them to create amazing art? Among other things, it's about the obsession with being avant-garde and edgy and breaking the mold. I would take that photo with the fucking cum on her face and I'd make it her album cover. It's about the dehumanization of pop stars and pushing people to the limit, the cynicism of the music industry and the psychopathy of producers, all sorts of things basically saying Hollywood, the showbiz industry, is horrible and seedy. Nothing wrong with any of these messages, and in fact, I think that the overall story on paper is actually quite interesting. In some ways, it reminds me a little bit of Whiplash. Plot-wise, it's an intriguing setup, the inner goings-on of a huge pop star's management team. It's how everything and everyone is characterised that's the issue, starting with the dialogue, which is obnoxious and annoying. Mental illness is sexy. Someone came on her face 
and then took a photo. At least in the first few episodes, the direction is all over the place. The first episode has the same type of framing as Succession, but only slightly tackier. And tonally, it's very similar. It's this frenetic, handheld cinematography as it follows all of these crude characters try and navigate their way through this PR nightmare. Some of the framing borders on incompetent and student film-esque, as some of the characters' faces are obscured during close-up shots. But it's strange it also at times has some decent looking cinematography, so it's this weird mix. Again, at least with the first episode, the dialogue is just on the nose and irritating. It's this shallow Hollywood satire. The hospital wristband, I mean, are, are we romanticizing mental illness? Absolutely. It's got to say revenge porn. It's got to say revenge porn or they're not going to take it down. The editing as well was unpleasant to sit through. It was supposed to be this snappy, quick style, but it really just came across as disorientating and choppy and just hackneyed garbage. Where and when? You know who I don't know. You live here. I know. Oh, you, you do too. Know. Who the well, fuck? I know who know goes that. into the room, but I And because this debuted a week after Succession ended, it invites that comparison to that amazingly put together show. <laughs> what the fuck is this piece of shit? Ah, oh, oh, oh my. Did that. The first scene of this show goes on for what feels like 25 minutes, and it's just reiterating the same basic points over and over again. I say scene, but really, it's not even a scene, it's more like this retarded montage sort of thing. And that is actually how this show conveys most of its storytelling. It's all made up of these hollow montages that have like no context or substance. It hardly ever stops to properly flesh things out. It's this pornographic diorama of a show and you're never invested. A glossed over version of these thin concepts and ideas. At least that was what it was like at the start. Yeah, I mean, I think what Brittany and Jocelyn have gone through is really unique, but ultimately universal. It is HBO, so it does retain a certain standard of production value, but it was almost as if the showrunners were testing the parameters for how tacky they could make this thing look while still having this high-end production value. Like, how best can we squander the HBO look? And they did a pretty good job at that. Now you can see. One of the most controversial and coincidentally least interesting things about this show is the fact that The Weeknd stars in it in quite a major role. In fact, one of the main characters, which is great. I didn't really know who The Weeknd was before all this. I've obviously heard of him, but I don't really care about him. Just some guy who's incorrectly spelled The Weeknd. Just kind of annoying, really, when you see his name plastered everywhere. Just like, add the E back in there, please. He plays a character named Tetris, and I'm keeping that joke in, even though Eli Roth does the same thing in episode five, but I wrote that down before I saw that episode, so I technically thought of it of my own accord. I don't know what happened to Tetris or Super Mario Brothers or wherever he is, but please. So I'm naming him Tetris throughout this review because it's a funny and witty thing. I believe the weekend's inclusion is this is the main component as to why this show has been so poorly received by both audiences and critics. This is one of the lowest rated shows I've ever seen, taking into account the level of production value that it's operating on. I was a few days late to this show and I kept hearing all of these things about how awful the weekend was, and from what I was hearing. Hearing, I was expecting this Tommy Wiseau tier performance. Really, it's just a flat, boring, incompetent performance. The American dream, rags to riches, trailers to mansions. No, I'm just at the club. Nice. Just catching up on some some work, you know. Unfortunately, I didn't get any entertainment value from how bad it was. It was just this stale character. Definitely still a noticeably incompetent performance. Like, you can play a game with any scene, just like a okay, spot the non-professional actor. It's a very vacuous performance, and this whole thing feels like an exercise in self-adulation. I think The weekend really fancies himself as this edgy, avant-garde, fucked up anti-hero type guy, this fetishization of this toxic relationship, almost like a Fifty Shades of Grey type scenario. Fucking stretch that tiny little pussy. 
But apart from that, he was really good. Now, the weekend sucking absolute ass might not have been as big a detriment to the show if his character wasn't such an integral part of the story. He's supposed to represent this mentality of the avant-garde taken to these psychopathic extremes where it becomes dangerous. Thematically, he's integral to the story and the philosophy that the show is peddling, but it's the weekend who gives a vain performance that you don't buy for a second. J.K. Simmons in Whiplash is a better example for the kind of thing that they're going for here. A character who is extreme, but 100% believes the things he says. And that is certainly not the case here. Are you fucking retarded? There's supposed to be this intimidation factor that's brought on by The weekend that also falls completely flat. It really is simple, they just needed a better actor. A real actor probably would have helped. For the first two episodes, the show continues to consist of these flashy montages that give the surface level idea of a story. Again, it's horribly rushed. Every theme, character, and idea has essentially no time to breathe. The first episode, we're supposed to witness how Lily Rose Depp character is taken in by this manipulative scary man and you just feel absolutely nothing because it's so glossed over. I know the weekend doesn't help but the editing just butchers so many of the scenes in this. She goes clubbing and the weekend's just there unceremoniously introduced with this random shot. <laughs> He goes, oh, hey, it's you, and they start dancing, and then they get a bit intimate, and then they start smooching, and then it's intercut with these random shots of them talking outside of the dance floor somewhere. Very briefly, it's like a two-second conversation, I think, so we're given a lot there. It's this significant scene that's presented like an afterthought. This is the blossoming of the relationship that supposedly this entire show is centered around. <laughs> This isn't a show, this is one long extended music video. A lot like Euphoria, the idol is very shocking and very edgy, a lot of graphic depictions of sex and some very disturbing and violent scenes. But again, because of the way it's edited and presented to us, these fucked up and shocking moments essentially mean nothing. Where is the story and the character development that we're supposed to attach to these scenes? There isn't any, it doesn't exist. It's just a bunch of provocative moments with nothing in between. Between, like, oh, oh, here's a masturbation scene, oh boy, oh, here's a kinky, violent sex scene. And this is essentially how you make sex boring. Like, I was surprised, I was watching this really horny show, and I was bored to shit. You gotta understand, I'm a pervert, and I'm watching all of these scenes with a scantily clad Lily Rose Depp, and I'm feeling nothing. I'm like, this is, this is boring, and I think I've grown as a person for that. Game of Thrones, remember that show? That got a lot of flack for its pornographic and indulgent sex scenes, but I can now recall a really well well-made sex scene from that show from season three. It's when Rob Stark first gets with that woman that he's not supposed to marry and it's this nice crescendo moment. That's what a sex scene is, it's this crescendo moment of a relationship, a well put together, well fleshed out relationship. Be it a wholesome or a toxic relationship, it still applies. Without any of that development, the sex scene just means nothing. And watching The weekend's character just do these things, it was like watching one of the Paul brothers direct a porno. Put your finger down your throat, make that, make that throat work for me, yeah. The Idol is an empty pastiche of a Sam Levinson project. It has all of the basic surface level motifs of his style, but nothing else. It's a misuse of some of the filmmaking tools that we saw him use better in Euphoria. Misplaced edge, misplaced sex scenes, misplaced montages, all of which are very valid filmmaking tools when used appropriately. They need to be well interwoven with something else, otherwise they carry no significance. Euphoria has an abundance of moments of hyper-reality where everything is over the top and stylish, but it also has plenty of moments that are much more grounded and hence it feels a lot more three-dimensional. It properly establishes the characters and then occasionally goes off into this surreal montage, but only to accentuate what has already been set up. And that show has extremely raw characters that are bursting with humanity, but with this show the characters are written more so as concepts than actual people. And it does make me wonder if perhaps Euphoria only works so well because Sam Levinson was writing from the heart. Because Rue Bennett's story is very similar to his own story, so he was drawing from something real. As soon as he stops writing what he knows, it goes tits up apparently. I'm saying... 
has not had come on their face. Okay. I, I think it used to be fun. No, I'm still holding out hope. I think he's still got it in him. So that's the first two episodes anyway. Two hours of empty misery porn with no profound message. Both episodes also near enough have the same exact structure and plot. With episode three, I admit things did start to improve a little. The obnoxious montaging wasn't as prevalent. We actually get a real scene. The weekend's performance edges from incompetent to somewhat serviceable. The themes and characters are finally developed a little more. We got the first conversation that I actually found interesting for what it was debating. This whole idea of bad experiences shaping art, how these awful things cause artists to create extraordinary work. Severity is the price we pay for greatness, that kind of thing. Is it worth it for us to go through these awful hardships if it leads us to create great art? Should we really be encouraging this process of turning trauma into inspiration? It also slows down with this dinner scene where it continues to develop these ideas. It's a scene, it's a, it's a real scene. Now Lily Rose Depp's character was quite vacuous for the first few episodes and I don't think this was the actress's fault, I think it was more down to the editing. Her performance was good, however, it wasn't necessarily breathtaking, it certainly wasn't enough to save the show, but she did a fine job. This dinner scene in question talks about the craziness of these artists who are always striving to be avant-garde and out there. Art is about taking risks, it is a critique of the insanity of being against the grain and innovative. And you can apply it to real world events, like how Kanye somehow got it in his head that it's avant-garde to hate Jews, I don't know how that happened. The dinner scene leads into yet another fucked up violent scene, but here there's now at least a decent amount of setup and context. It's accentuating a theme that's had a decent amount of development and hence we can actually get something from this scene. And the plot does start to pick up from here on out as in things actually happen. The Chloe. Ah! It was here where I started to get a better picture of what the show was going for, not something that everyone was gonna like, more so in the of a Harmony Korean film. It did remind me of Spring Breakers at times. Just this trashy, unpleasant, disturbing thing. Since things weren't so bad anymore, I did try and get on this thing's side and like look for good moments. I thought Jocelyn's agent was a good actress and the dialogue was far less crass. A lot of this show is shot like a documentary and there are actually a few instances where this is pulled off quite well and everything feels naturalistic with these exchanges that people have, none of which include The weekend. At one point, Jocelyn's ex-boyfriend shows up, and he's a much better actor than The Weeknd, so the moments between her and her ex-boyfriend are actually fairly well-acted. It's a glimpse of what a well-acted relationship would look like in this show. The fifth and final episode may have been the season's strongest. Again, it had an actual story. There weren't any problems with the filmmaking. I have to say, I still wasn't necessarily finding that much engagement or stimulation from watching the show. I was more so studying it and then it ended and then I said to myself I don't think I like that What this show does to you is it makes you watch a story about these pits of the earth, awful people, awful things happening, everything's disgusting and horrible, and there's no catharsis to be had from it because the filmmaking is whack, so you're just having a miserable time for no reason. It's like if you watched Irreversible but the filmmaking was shite, so you couldn't even go, oh, well, at least I got like a cool film out of that, like the filmmaking was good, like I'm disturbed beyond belief, I'm never going to recover, but at least I've got like a good one to add to the letterboxed watch list. Although The Idol did get somewhat decent near the end, I still did feel like I was dusting for scraps of quality rather than just enjoying the show outright. I was putting in the work to reinvigorate myself after watching those two episodes of Pure Shy. The weekend's lacklustre character is ever-present and is such an integral part to the overall themes of the story, so it's really damaging. It all makes for a crude, less subtle version of a story that's been executed by other filmmakers. Whiplash, of course, comes to mind, other films like Under the Silver Lake, even Babylon as a recent example. A very valid and interesting message that's clouded in 
all of this shit filmmaking. Maybe if this was a two hour film and had less montages, less fluff, it might be good. If it had dialogue that wasn't as obnoxious and didn't have the fucking weekend in. One key thing that I learned from this is that Sam Levinson has some growing up to do as a filmmaker and probably as a person just in general. And as a general rule, he should make a habit of avoiding shallow musicians. Does that say you little fucking shit? What the fuck does that say?